All right, guys, YouTube, what is up? It is Thursday. I just got off work. I'm heading home right now. I did get a few things that came in in the package today. Check it out. As some of you do know that I do watch Christian Guzman every once in a while when I have free time. He has this energy drink, similar to Monster, that came out last week called Up Energy. I just got in. I got about two cases of these. Check it out. I got two cases of these that came in, and I uh, got this in today. I'm not going to lie, man. These are definitely much better. <laughs> Than monster and I'm really glad that I bought these but anyway got that and I got other gifts for someone other people here but yeah other than that man let's go ahead I need to head out let's head out let's begin the video To my car. All right, guys. Oh, you probably can't see me. Let's make this brighter. Up the All right, guys. So I just got back from. Where's that echo sound coming from? That echo sound is annoying me, and I'm about to sneeze. One second. Oh, anyway, I just got the Thai food right here. Got back from the Thai food restaurant. So let's go ahead. Let's get to my house. See you guys in a second. All right, YouTube. So I just got off work right now. I'm actually here at my house. What time is it? It's about it's about 2:30 p.m. Got off work. Got a really nice gift from the owners of the company, not a tent company. I want to say thank you to them for that. But other than that, I got a lot of errands to do today, and so I figured to start off the vlog for tomorrow, might as well follow me to the auto shop. So let's go. Oh shoot! Drop my phone. That was on video. <laughs> nice. All right, guys. So I'm here now. I'm about to get my hair cut. Um. I usually bring my camera in me to get a cut, but I probably won't. Just check it out. So this is my hair right now. You probably won't be able to tell the difference at all, to be quite honest. Make it a little brighter so you can see my hair. There you go, look at. So this, this is my hair right now. You see how long it is here? Pretty long hair. I need to get a cut. Last time I got a haircut was three weeks ago, so I need to go again. So let's see how it look. You guys ready? Is that gonna work? No, it's not. All right, what is up? I'm back. Can you guys even tell? You probably can't even tell. I think it looks exactly the same, to be honest. You can't even tell because now, when I get a haircut during the winter, I don't want my hair to get too short. I like to leave it a little long where you still can't really see too much skin on my head anyway. So, yeah, got my haircut. Now, it's time. It's time to get some food, man. I'm starving. Last time I ate, all I ate today, okay, breakfast was a six-inch veggie delight sandwich, literally just vegetables and bread for lunch. breakfast, which was at 8 a.m. And then I ate another six-inch Subway sandwich, just veggies and bread, vinegar, salt, and pepper for lunch at 12 p.m. And it's about 4 p.m. right now, and I'm starving, man. I'm hungry. Ah, I barely ate today. Very low calories. Um, And I'm going to go ahead and get Thai food and go all out tonight, and then got Bible study. And then, yeah, anyway, let's go before I talk about some cut. Peace. Something about the way you move makes me want to feel your glow. Something about the way you dress, baby. Got me feeling like you miss, baby. It's just forever. Go we say we go. Cause I just want to get down with you. It looks like they don't have the food yet, so I'll be chilling here for a little bit and just do some stuff on my phone while I wait for it. So what I ordered today was some chicken barbecue with rice from my roommate. I got some pad too with extra fried tofu, Chinese broccoli, rice for me. Um, but apparently the food's not ready yet. But man, I'm starving. Shades on. Yeah, the computer so no one can read it in my life. <laughs> You do just watch my YouTube channel. <laughs> you know what, YouTube? I kind of just had like a uh, like a light bulb moment. Something I want to talk about with you guys today is I think it's it's a question that I've talked. It's something that I've talked about before, but in more detail. Like, when do you know when like 
you're job ready? When do you know that you're good enough to get hired? And I think that's something everyone wants to know. Why? Because I just did a poll t today and it looked like about 40% or so. And I'll, I'll check it out again later. For, it looks like about 40% of everyone who did the poll has not even gotten hired yet. And, I'm, and or some people have had some interviews but haven't gotten hired. And I bet you guys are wondering, then how do you know if you're ready? Is it too soon? Is it too late? What is it that I need to do? I'm going to talk about that today when I get to my house. So be patient, yo. Be patient. Be patient. Let's go to my house. They gave me fried rice. So Monday, does that you're going you're going vegan on Monday or just healthier? I am. Who am I talking to? Alright guys, what's up YouTube? Um now it is pretty late in the day already. Um as you can tell my beard already grew towards the end of the day. And to end this vlog, I want to talk about pretty much the title of the video, uh, which talks about how do you know when you're finally job ready? Like, what is that like standard that I'll say, you're ready to start applying? You know, and I've talked about this in previous videos, but I think the way I'm gonna dive into today will be very different than what, what I've done in the past because I go into it pretty much detail by detail and really more than just thinking if you're ready, like what is it that you have to make sure you do to make sure you get to a point when you will eventually be ready to get a job in this very competitive, tough industry to get in. Why? Because to become a programmer, to get into the industry of code, it's not for the, the faint of heart. It's not for just people who think it'll be easy. For those who are willing to hustle, to put in the hard work, to do whatever it takes to get to what you want to be, to reach pretty much your dreams. And the way I want to talk about this is, is just, it's important to know that there's no such like black and white moment where you just know you're ready, right? There's no moment when you think, okay, you know what? I studied HTML for 500 hours, CSS for 300, JavaScript for 1000, PHP for 2000. You know what, I'm job ready. There's no moment when you just think you're just ready like that. To be quite honest, when you think about it, the best developers in the world right now, what do they do every single day? What are they doing that make them so good is that they're continuously learning how to program better. They're continuously learning, yes, new languages, but just how to do things. They're interested in what they're doing. They want to find ways to do what they do now to do it even better. But they're not just like comfortable being at what they're at, but they're doing whatever it takes to continue increase their skills as a programmer too. And, and I think what's important is, you know, we always think about the opportunities I want to find. What are the opportunities that I need? Where can I find the best opportunities to get a job? But I think what we need to also be able to do is to also look at it from the side of the actual company that's looking to hire programmers today also. For example, what is it that they're looking for? What do I need to have to be able to show them that they can take a chance on me to get hired? And to be quite honest, in this industry, to be able to, to just sell, to be honest, to get your foot in the door, yes, we have to know these languages and programming, but one thing we have to be able to learn and build, and even if you don't have it, and it can be for many programmers, is having that soft skill. And what I mean is being able to pretty much sell yourself, because if you're putting yourself out in the job market, you're in the market, meaning you're selling something. And what are you selling? You're selling yourself too. It's hard to do, but unfortunately, you know, to be honest, to get a job in this industry, you have to be able to do it. And I think it starts off very simply, like what do we have to do? You have to, for number one, create your own website, maybe start a GitHub. If you need a place where you are able to display your work, which we're all able to do, right? Maybe start a blog. And what you can do in the blog is talk about what you're doing, why is it interesting, what you've learned, and what do you keep, what are you capable of doing now? And pretty much what we need to be able to do as programmers today is that we have to sell ourselves. We have to show them, you know, oh wow, this person blogs about what he's learning. And he's talking about why he's interested in that code and why companies might be interested in learning this program or language or why this might fit a certain company or, you know, what you've learned from it and how you really think you need to focus on something to help improve your weaknesses as a programmer. And being able to show this stuff on the internet and on the blog, and that's very helpful. Like for example, this YouTube channel, I talk about code all the time, but I don't always show my code. So because I don't show my code on this vlog, it's a vlog, right? And I'm gonna start doing it now, but I can't really use my YouTube channel to help me get a job somewhere else. Does that make sense? This is a vlog, this isn't a portfolio. That's totally different with my portfolio online or things I work on. That's totally different than a vlog that I do right now. And I think something that we tend to forget get is that we have to be able to clean up ourselves on the internet too yes you go to a job 15 minutes on early right and you look nice for that day but what about when you show your life on linkedin on instagram on you know youtube like me or on twitter or social media and facebook and what's really important is that if you have any pictures like of you drinking alcohol well that's not bad right to do but imagine if an employer sees you with like a couple beers in front of you partying and like you just look less trustworthy to be quite honest your LinkedIn, what kind of picture do you have in there? Your Instagram, what pictures do you post on there? Do you talk about code on there at all? 
On your Twitter, do you talk about code or do you, just, do you just complain and curse everywhere? But if I was a player and I saw that, then I'm thinking, you know what? I think person B might be a little better because they look more professional and they'll represent our company. If they represent our company, I want to make sure that they at least look or present themselves as a clean person online. There's nothing like black and white to know when you're ready, but what are you doing now? Like, what is it that you're actually doing to get in the industry, to get in this job market to make sure you're ready? What I would do, you know, and I, I do do this, I look around often just to see like what companies are around. If I didn't have a job yet, if I didn't have an experience, then what I would do is that I would go out and look at the top, what, 50 to 100 companies I wanna apply for, right? And I'll apply to all of them. You wanna apply to all of them, and there's a good chance, depending on how much effort you put in, how much hard work you put in, if you put in the work, out of 100 in, uh, applications, you might get, what, three or five interviews max, right? Maybe one minimum, right? <laughs> but that's what it takes to get an industry. It's not black and white, right? But, but, to be quite honest, you don't want to just wait on someone to get back to you and apply to million jobs. You want to increase your chances to make sure you can get an industry right away. Instead of waiting if your job ready, you have to do something to get your foot in the door. And I think one thing that a lot of people forget to do is that it's pretty much, quite honestly, it's like networking. And what I mean networking, it's going to a place, for example, a good place to meet other fellow programmers, up and coming programmers, or people who work at actual companies. Now, one place that you can do to actually meet people is like, go to maybe meetup.com and look for any coding gatherings or meetups that they have within your city, within your area, and go there and just learn. Even if you don't work with Java, right, you're mainly like a JavaScript person, but if you go there and you learn Java there and you meet people there, you network, and you know what? And you just find a way to get to know them and maybe they'll have an open position, you get to know them, they'll be like, hey, you know what, Chris, or John, or Bob, or whatever your name is, hey, there's an open position here, but I could recommend you, man. I know you're new, but you know what? You seem like a cool guy. I like talking to you here at the meetup, and I want to give you an opportunity. If not that, Yep, another way to find, and this is what I learned from Gary Vee, to find a way to get into a door or something is out of the top 50 to 100 companies you want to work for, look at who works in the company. It's very easy to find out who works there. Go to LinkedIn.com. Go to LinkedIn.com and what you can do is look at the people who work there, find them, research online, right? And find a Twitter and follow them and just follow them and interact with them naturally for the next couple months. And then as you build up a conversation with them and you can tell them later on, maybe in a month or two, tell them, hey, I'm just wondering, um, are you actually hiring at your company? I'm looking for a position right now and I was wondering if I could give you my resume and you could give me a good word, put a good word in for me and maybe get me a job there and help me out. And there's a good chance you might get a no, but to be honest, uh, it's either apply to 100 jobs and get only a couple interviews and after you get those interviews, there's a good chance you won't get hired anyway or do that. But while you do that, what you can do is network with people who already work there and get your foot in the door. Because to be quite honest, nowadays, how do you get a job is to get in. And I, I think one of the things that can stop people from even trying to get in a job market, even though they are ready, is just fear. A fear of getting no, a fear of rejection. But what you need to do is just finally to be able to go in and go all out. Uh, simple things to prepare for a whiteboard interview. Um, I, I, you know, I've taken a few whiteboard interviews um, and it, it's fun, I like it, it's challenging. But it's very terrifying. But that's why I need to practice on that too. Uh, for example, you know how to get, when you finally get that interview, you get your foot in the door. Make sure you show up on time for the interview. Make sure you dress up well for the interview. Uh, you know, and before you even usually get in the interview, get your foot in the door. You usually have a phone interview. And what the phone interview usually does is that what that company is doing is they're trying to like weed out the weird people, <laughs> weird out weed out people who seem like they're little out of their mind and maybe we don't want them to come work to this company and so when you do have a phone interview don't get too nervous they might ask you some technical questions usually they don't ask you any technical questions um, and just be a normal person don't show off and just be you be someone that they would want to hang out with and talk with when you go to the company you know after months of work you know to be honest and you know just going through this over and over and over again a matter of months if not a year or so you will get a job and I think when you get that job and I think what something that can mess up a lot of people is well, I want to get paid this certain amount of money. And someone else says, I want to get paid around this amount of money because this person gets this much at his first job. But I think more than just trying to get that first job that pays well, is get the paid experience. Go for that company where you can learn the most. And after one or two years, as you learn, you become a great programmer, then look for a better company that will double your salary or whatever, or pay you $30,000 more than there. It's not about getting that job right away without paying you the most, but it's really about just getting, to that, getting your foot into the door and find a way to learn and just get there I, I i know it can be discouraging i know it can be hard but man when it does get difficult and as you're trying to get this in job you know 
that, that's when you really have to dig deep, hard, and remember why you went into this for the first in the first place. Why you put in so much effort in the first place to get into the industry. It's because you want to change your life. And I know it's not easy, guys, but I really hope that this video, I know this talk at the end of the vlog is very long, but this is something I'm really passionate about, something I want to talk to you guys about. And it's not about when a job ready. Yes, learn. At least know HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Start getting to PHP and build your portfolio and all of that. But now you have to find a way to work and hustle your way into it too. Go to meetups, right? Clean up your image online. Um, just prepare whiteboard interviews when you start getting interviews. You know, be normal when you get the phone interview. And do whatever it takes to make sure you get your foot in the door. And more than just being job ready, it's just how do you get into the industry in the first place. So I hope this helped. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you made it all the way to the end of this very long vlog, please like the video. Let me know in the comment below if you did. And I know a lot of people watch this and never leave comments, but if you've never left a comment or haven't in a while, please do so. It mean the world to me. These vlogs put take a lot of effort to do. It honestly, right now, uh, I'm uploading this tonight. It's about 10.53 p.m. on Saturday, December 23rd, and it's late. Honestly, I did not want to record this, um, but I made a commitment to upload every other day, be consistent, and on Monday, I'll do a live video, and you know, I'm gonna make sure I keep going because I care about you guys, and just thank you, and I hope you guys like this. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. This is Krishan, this is the Life of a Developer, and I'm out. Peace. Okay. Hello, how'd you do? I'm not broken, I'm just split in two Hope you're fine Ain't got time To do everything you said you would Frames of the past and The memory of you just